Color grading C log footage is actually much easier than you think. And with a tiny bit of knowledge, you'll be able to go from this to this in about one minute. Today, I'll show you how to do it without any special plugins or LUTs. I'm Raphael, and welcome to the channel. Conversion LUTs are great when they work, but what do you do when they fail? And they will fail. This technique I'm using in this video will work in any editor that has color correction tools. I did this exact same walkthrough in DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. You can find those links in the description below. In this video, we'll talk about how to set the exposure and contrast properly in log footage, how to easily white balance with and without a color chart using the waveform, how to correct skin tone issues using the vector scope, how to check to make sure that the skin tone is set between 40 and 70 IRE and exposed properly, how to set the presets to use on all your footage, and how you'll never have to ask for help again once you've practiced these steps. Full disclosure, I am not a colorist, but for most of my client work, I will gladly hire pros to be as precise as possible to grade the footage. However, for smaller projects and my own personal work, I've learned these steps required to quickly get from log footage to the base grade without using LUTs or expensive plugins. So this isn't the be all and end all for color correcting C log footage or any log footage for that matter. There are many ways to do the same thing but it's a method I found that works really well to rough in a base grade and add some personality to it after. So let me ask this question. Why do we shoot log in the first place? It's to ensure that the camera captures the most amount of detail in any scene, the darkest dark and the brightest bright. Rec 709 is designed to output between seven and nine stops of dynamic range, and it's mostly a display standard. Log helps expand that distance to 12 to 16 stops depending on the camera. Rec 709 color space looks pleasant. Log footage does not. So then we have to bring back the information to a pleasant look. But now we can choose if we want the brighter end, the darker end, or a nice mix of both. As I go through this method, I will try to cut it down to only the essential things you'll need to know to correct and then grade your footage. All these steps assume that your footage is exposed mostly correctly and is within the right white balance. Check out this video where I talk about correctly exposing your EOS R for C log footage. And since you're here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if this video helps you out. Quick terminology recap we'll be talking about in this video. Color correction and color grading. Color correction is when you fix color issues, color space, color temperature, the white balance, or skin tones in the video. Color grading is adding color for creative purposes to convey meaning, mood, location, time of day, themes, character associations. It's really powerful stuff psychologically. If you have a color chart, this will help setting up your own LUTs or correcting for any location. But don't worry, I'll show you how to correct even without a color chart. All a LUT does is tonally remap colors from one place to another. This value should be this, and that value should be that. And it's all based on log footage you start with. That is why different LUTs don't work with different log footage. And it's why creative LUTs never work without normalizing your footage first. They all assume the footage is starting from a certain color space, like Rec. 709, which is the most common. But we won't be talking about the creative grading much in this video. This video is how to get your log footage to a starting point by normalizing it. The creative decisions you make on how you want your footage to look after that, that is up to you. That's where you get to play and have fun. If you like it and you think it looks good, Go for it, there really are no rules. To be clear, there isn't one, one not, not to rule them all. Unless your footage is perfectly exposed with 100% perfect white balance, expect to do a bit of tweaking either the color tint or the luma. Though there are some simple truths that do work as a starting point. And today we'll cover that workflow. So the first thing you wanna do is go over to the color tab. And if you have a color chart up, I know what you're thinking, but Raphael, I don't have a color chart, so this isn't gonna work for me. And you would be wrong, random citizen. I am going to show you how to do it without color charts and even without any skin tone in the shot. So just give me a second. We're gonna start with the color chart first because this is the best way to get precise colors. Open up the waveform monitor. Let's make it a little bit bigger. This represents the luminance values across the image from left to right. The bottom is black and top is full white. So from left to right, you can actually see where all the hot spots are, where all the brightness happens. Here are all the colors on the color chart, the white, gray, and black right here. So what we wanna do with these three stripes right here, we wanna bring the white as close to the top as we can. We wanna bring the middle gray right into the middle, and we wanna bring the black as close as we can to the bottom without touching it. I like bringing the black to about five or 10% and the white to about 90, 95%, and then adjust from there. So. 
Also open up vector scope because these are the tools we'll be using. Make sure you have your clip selected. Go into basic correction. And this is where we're gonna start bringing down the black so they not too far. We're gonna also bring up the whites and expand that out. And it's finding the balance between highlights and shadows and the black and whites. Without pushing it too far. If you need to, you can bump up the exposure. But again, you're trying to get the blacks to about five to 10% and the whites to about 90, 95%. So already this image is looking better. Next, we wanna add some contrast. Not too much, 25 is pretty good. We wanna add some saturation at about 115 to 120, depending on the shot. So before and after, and now we're gonna make sure that the white balance is good so so we're going to make a mask around the white gray and black go back to the scopes and we want to turn on parade rgb we want to make sure that the red green and blue are all they're all the same height so this is where you can adjust your tint and you can notice that they're dancing so we just want to bring them in line we want to make sure that that middle gray gets down to the middle here. So this is where we can drop everything down. And the blacks are about 10%, middle gray is at 50, and the whites are about 90%. And if we check these lines here, you can still see that there's a little bit of extra blue in, in the shot. This is where I would go to color wheels and I would add in a little bit of green to drop down the blues. And even looking here, looks like there's still more blue and green and red in the shadows. So I would push it away from blue to balance it out a little bit better. We know that this is white, this is gray, and this is black. So I'm just gonna turn off the mask so now that we're here, we're just gonna double check the skin tones to make sure that they are the right exposure as well. And also the right color. So we're gonna go back to scopes and we're looking at the color and that looks pretty good overall. But if you need to adjust it, this is where you can use tint to push it one way or another. So definitely a little bit to the right of the skin tone indicator would be ideal, but we're noticing that it's a little bit hot. so. This is where we can drop down the highlights overall because proper exposure for skin tone is between 40 and 70 IRE. You can go a little bit over and a little bit under depending on the situation and definitely the tone of the skin. So we're just gonna drop it down just a little bit. The highlights gonna drop it down until it feels comfortable. You can also drop down the whites and just bounce it out because ultimately it's the skin tone that we want to make sure that is completely accurate and the color looks pretty good. We can tweak that just a bit. So now we're going to turn off the mask and we're going to save, right click, save this as a preset. We're going to call this color chart studio. We're going to save it in presets. And where it's saved, it's saved into your effects palette. There it is. So we're gonna go to a shot that I know was filmed in the same location. We're gonna take that preset, double click it, it'll add it. That looks pretty good. We're just gonna double check to make sure that the skins are exposed properly. And definitely make sure that you don't select the lips or the eyes, cause that will give you interesting color variations. So it does seem a little bit hot even for this. So this is where you can drop it down even further, the highlights, and just bring, bring the color back to the skin tone indicator. It's close to that line. 
because the other shot we were working off hand. So this is more accurate representation of what you will actually see and what will actually work best. So we're just going to turn off the mask right now and just take a look at it. And that looks and feels good as a good base color correct. This is where I would add in a little bit of sharpness, about 15. I try not to go higher than that. The reason I like to have sharpness at zero in the camera and add it in post, because if there's any skin blemishes that I don't want to accentuate, having that sharpness already baked into the image, I won't be able to get rid of it. So this way I can add in sharpness. If you want to do selective color correction, this is where you can do it, where you just select the, the highlights, where you just select a specific color and you're able to adjust it by itself. But we're not going to be talking about that today. And this is also where you can start adding in the teal and orange look into the shadows. So base color correct and then a simple teal and orange. And it's really about subtlety when it comes to color correction. But again, we're not going to be talking about that too much today. It's just about the base correction to make sure that the image is exposed from C log. All right, let's do another image from scratch. So this one, we're going to open up our scopes go to base color correction. I'm gonna drop the blacks down. The highlights already look like they're pretty far out there. Drop the shadows, add a little bit of contrast. Add the saturation. We're gonna select, we're gonna add the skin tone, making sure to avoid the eyes and the mouth. That looks pretty good. We can tweak it just a bit, but definitely feels really bright comparatively because we want the skin tone, the brightest part to be around 70. So this is where you can drop down overall. So let's take a look at that. You can add in a little bit more contrast. Definitely bring the blacks down if you wanted to. And just go to where the image feels good. Overall, that feels pretty good, properly exposed. Because the waveform is showing us from left to right. So everything here in the middle is the yellow shirt and the face tones. You probably add in a little bit of saturation. I would save this out and apply it to every piece of footage that I have in the timeline. You can work on your final grade here and then apply it to everything else. Premiere also lets you export a LUT where you can use in other applications. So let's do another image and see how fast we can get it done. Again, starting from scratch, looking at the waveform, drop the blacks down, along with the shadows. Now I know this is a black shirt, but it shouldn't be completely black. Add some saturation, add some contrast. Next, we're going to check the face to make sure that the skin tone is exposed properly. Trying to avoid the lips and the eyes. So it's a little bit bright, so I can drop that down overall. The color looks pretty good. We can add a little bit of saturation into that. And the more saturation you have, it depends on the skin tone and the subject that you have but pale skin tone is closer and then you can push it a little bit further out. So let's take a look at that. Turn off the mask. So this is the before and after. And that's your base color correction. So let's do a shot where we don't have any skin tones and no color chart. Again, starting from scratch, we're gonna drop the blacks and the shadows down. Going to bring up the whites and the highlights. Add some contrast. Add some saturation. Now I know that this shot was exposed correctly for the color temperature, but because it feels on the warm side, I want to add a little bit of the blue back in. And I know that these are black, so I'm going to double check this. So I'm just going to select the black. I'm going to select the black boots. 
I'm gonna open up the parade. And I wanna make sure that these line up as close as possible. So this is where you can, so then I would go to wheels and in the shadows, I would add more blue to the shot, which brings down the red and the green. So let's jump back out, turn that off. There's the before and after, and even before we added the blue and then after. And then I would save this out and put it for the rest of the image. Add some sharpness, add a little bit of vignette, just keeping it subtle to keep the focus on there. Okay, let's do one more shot where there's not much skin tone. I'm just starting from scratch again. Drop the blacks, trying to keep them at around five or 10 between there. We're gonna bring up the highlights. We're gonna bring up the whites. We'll bring down the shadows and the blacks. Add some saturation, add a little bit of contrast. And the contrast and saturation are what is key to bring back log footage into something that is very pleasant in Rec. 709. Trying to get rid of that flat image. So because we have a little bit of skin tone here, so we're gonna double check that to make sure that it's properly exposed. So let's take a look at that. So just checking on the vector scope, definitely push the tint towards magenta and red. And the exposure is a little bit hot so we can bring down the highlights. A little bit of the whites. So let's jump out of that. Let's take a look at it overall. Add a little bit more of contrast. Oh. Blacks feel a little too black. And that feels pretty good. We have our saturation and it really comes down to what feels good there are no real rules let's just remap what colors should be and should look like so this so this value should be this value and that value should be that value and that's exactly what we're doing we're doing the exact same process but this allows you to have complete control over your image for every single project and you can save these LUTs out if you're filming in the same location over and over again, you can save these presets and LUTs and use them as you see fit. There are many other things you can do, but I just wanted to show how to color correct for C-Log footage from the Canon EOS R and C-Log 3 footage from the C200. So let's recap. Use the waveform monitor, drop the shadows to about 5%, bring the highlights to about 95%, add a little contrast, boost the saturation using the vector scope, Check to make sure your skin tones are on the skin tone indicator. Use the luma value between 40 to 70 for skin. Add your creative grade that fits your story and mood. Sharpen the image to what feels right for you. Add a vignette to help focus on the important thing in the scene. Save your preset or LUT. Apply the grade to the rest of your footage and you are done. If you do find a LUT that works for you and it converts and corrects your log footage correctly, use it. It'll save you a lot of time. I made this video as a guide for when your LUTs don't work or you get tired of a particular look and you want to create your own and for you to be able to color correct your C-Log footage in any scenario. Let me know if you guys have any tips or tricks to color grade your C-Log footage. Also, I would love to see how you guys use these techniques to color grade your own C-Log footage. As always, thanks for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if it helped you out. I'm Rafael. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.